Guys, I'm here today at the City of Sydney Power Plant. This brick building right here, right in that corner, all the way over to here. Been here since 1906, and I was able to contact the city manager of the power plant and get a personal tour, actually, from Jeff Thompson. Uh, and he's there waiting for me. So I'm here today at the Sydney, Nebraska power plant. The plant's been here since 1906, I understand. Now it's all diesel. It originally started out with steam. And where this diesel engine is, they had a steam engine. Of course, it's been, it's been replaced by that diesel. So they got several different makes of diesels in here. Uh, this is a Fairbanks Morris. This one's no longer uh, running. Here we go. Oh, uh, head gasket blown. Uh, they might or might not fix it. So the sound you heard there earlier was the phone ringing. Uh, I gotta thank uh, Jeff Thompson. He's uh, the maintenance guy. He's the only guy. And Mike Palmer, the facility manager, uh, for allowing me to do this. Uh, They've let me free run of the place to shoot video. So this is a crank, crank, uh, the crankshaft, I should say, down here. And this is the con rod. You're looking at the con rod end. And get a little bit of scale. It's about six inches across there. So those are uh, fuel strainers there. This, is, this engine's also been converted to run on uh, natural gas. This is the natural gas line coming in. This is the fuel injection pump. This is the Woodward uh, Governor. This is a very old Woodward Governor. Uh, I tell you, it's a Type uh, IC 300. Well, a Type IC, I should say, 300 RPM Woodward Governor. Very cool. Say so this is a two cycle engine, and this is a large piston pump for piston scavenging air. Now, piston scavenging air is also the combustion air, and on this side, they have the crankcase open for the smaller piston rod going up inside there. It's on the end, of, very this is the very uh, end of the crankshaft. where, you know, later on you have turbochargers and blowers. Uh, this is just a piston. Let me go around here. This is your exhaust manifold. It's kind of opened up in there. Uh, you can probably see inside a little bit. Maybe you see the ports and stuff. Kind of hard to tell. Those are the ports right there. Those are the ports to the piston. And the exhaust, they've already disconnected all this stuff and capped them off. They don't expect to get this going again. They felt they over-pressurized one of the cylinders and they, you know, they, they blew the head gaskets basically and uh, coolant throughout the sy lube oil system. And They have never really done a thorough inspection to see if they could run it. But they're not running it. You know, so it's kind of red tag that they call it. These are large alternators, uh, high voltage alternators. Yeah, this unit went out in uh, out of service in January 21, 2013. This is this this unit here on the end here is the exciter, DC excitation to the AC alternator. That creates a magnetic field for the AC generation. The monitoring panel. Over here we have a couple, two more engines. This one also has the piston on the end, has a scavenging air piston, or air, scavenging air, air I should say. 
Here's a sign for 1200 horsepower engine. Did I get it for you so you can read it? So the alternator and exciter also here on the end. Just like the other ones. This one's very similar to the other engine, but a little bit newer. Then we come around. Uh, well, it's your we're shooting here. This is the back side of the, one of the switchboards. For voltage control, breaker controls, it's that's all this is in here. Anyway, well, here's the uh, Fairbanks Morris engine, this side. And what's this bar? This bar is the bar he's got in here. Uh, he's priming the, he needs to reprime this engine. He couldn't get it started the other day. And he's just jacking the fuel pumps uh, to work the air out of the injector lines and such. Go up on top here, I'll show you this. There. So, uh, these are the cylinders. Now those are, oh, let's see. Those are about 20 inches across, 21 inches across. Two, three, four, five, eight cylinder engine. Now, if you guys were watching Mr. Pete a while back, he showed a gauge that was for taking pressure volume graphs on diesel engines. And this is the test cock right here where you would hook that tool. And you take a, what they call the card. And it would be a pressure volume card. And you can see how your cylinders, you do it to each cylinder, and you'd see how they're doing. Now this engine is only set up for a diesel oil. And you can see each cylinder here, how it's attached to the crankcase. All bolted down. Uh, here's the generator right next to the Fairbanks Morris, and it has a nice little sign. So this is a Nordberg engine, installed in 1951, 3,440 horsepower, 2,160 kilowatts, two-cycle engine. And this would set up for fuel, diesel and natural gas. Now this one has a blower. That blower is about four feet tall. And down the crankcase, uh, doors here, and those are your explosion reliefs in case you do have crankcase explosion. And this is the exhaust manifold, this big pipe right here. You walk around, there's some uh, nice real, real wrenches here. Here's a wrench uh, almost the size of the one that Ray Goff got at the bash. Wrenches like this are very common on this size engines. All of some big tools. There's a little socket for you. Well, this one up here, this one's a three and a half incher. Nice big wrenches. Got to stand back just to film them. Uh, these are oil, oil purifier filters, oil, oil filters for the engines. So this is a Nordberg. Uh, one ship I sailed on, we had a Nordberg engine. It was an auxiliary generator engine. And actually, the school where I was, I think it was, I think they had a, it was a Nordberg there also. But yeah, I worked on a couple Nordbergs before. These are your fuel injection. Now, why is there two pumps? Well, one's natural gas and one's diesel. Uh, 
but this one uh, is the I think this one's the diesel and this is natural gas and you've seen the color coded in all the lines uh, yellow or this yellow orange color is the natural gas lines these here are cylinder lubricators kind of like your one-shot systems on uh, on your milling machine or such like that where you push that down once and it will give a shot of oil cylinder lube uh, six locations on this one uh, to each cylinder it, it weeps it into the uh, sidewall of the cylinder well each cylinder has one of these here's a shot here they got a nice plexiglass cover here on your cam followers and the cam shaft for the fuel injection system now on a marine engine uh, you'll you you see very unusual looking cams like on a marine pulsion engine because the cam shaft can be shifted and it, there's actually two cams would there be two cams here one for forward running and one for reverse running right next to each other and they're sloped at very very cool and the whole camshaft would shift back and forth when you forward and reverse the main engine uh, this this engine's no need to reverse of course it's just for power generation another one cam the followers up there big roller you can see the roller up in here and we're going down here's the station where you start the engine and this has a direct air air injection for starting uh, into the cylinder this engine and this is the starting station uh, fuel uh, settings and speed controls and then the woodwork governor another IC now this one's uh, rated up to 500 rpm And then here's your gas line, the big yellow line coming in. And this is the uh, control panel for this Nordberg. So there's the Nordberg. That's the alternator. And then there, this is a Fulton Ironworks engine over here. They call it unit number one, installed in 1949. Now there's a nice sign up here. Uh, I don't know if I can zoom in on it. Now, this is the Fulton Ironworks engine, the DC exciter right here. You guys might be interested in the nameplate, but it's kind of hard to read. There's the alternator. Uh, just to give you an idea of scale, that alternator there is approximately eight, nine feet across diameter. Now, this engine here, the right up there, that unit there is the governor on this one, another Woodward IC type. They work very, very similar to the modern ones today, except for the not counting the electronics ones, but all hydraulic ones. They work very, very similar. Now this has a camshaft up here. This is the end right there, that round part. That's a round end, and that's the camshaft housing all along there. We'll climb up there. Down here, these are the crankcase doors, of course, for these this engine. Okay, so here's the top of the Fulton engine up here. And each one of these here is the fuel pump inside here, inside, and there's the camshaft in here. Goes down to the fuel injector. Now, where those lines, orange lines connect, that whole thing, it's the top end of the fuel injector. And then open valves. These are the valve springs, the rocker arms, all open.
Another IC 500 RPM, Governor Woodward. And that big tube there, the gray part, is the uh, exhaust box, uh, I want to say. Yeah. The, this is the exhaust manifold. This is the scavenge air manifold below it. And this is turbocharged, this engine. We'll go around the other end and get a good shot of the turbo. And I want to say here, because these big, this thermometer here and that tube going into there, that would be cooling wa coolant water. And then this is the uh, down below again on the Fulton engine. And here's your cylinder lubricator pump here. And this is run off this linkage here, off the camshaft. Goes on up. Just uh, sits there and goes up and down. Up, up, up. Back here on the end, uh, Fulton engine, and there's the turbo there. That's about three feet across the uh, casing. Nice little turbo. And we have another monitoring control station for this engine. Gauges, uh, start stop button for pumps, and things like that. Right on the other side of the Fulton engine. Yeah, coolant water coming in and stuff. So we're walking back around the, the end of the, there's another oil filter unit, but I don't think that one's hooked up. Yeah, it might be. But anyway, back around and heat exchangers and auxiliary equipment down in here. Looks like cooling water. This is probably their, uh, this is probably their heat exchanger for cooling water for the engines. over and take a look at that main control panel. This is this Nordberg with the newest engine in here put in. This one is about 12, good 12 feet across uh, on the alternator here. And the exciter is right here on this one. And it is belt driven off a, right here off a huge step pulley. And we'll get down in there. Or not step pulley. What am I thinking about? A multi bolt belt pulley. Uh, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Twelve, twelve belts, I think, on there. I'm gonna count them. There we go. Multi belt pulley driving the exciter. I think there's twelve belts. Very cool. Uh, Jeff was telling me they their bridge crane here on this engine over this engine is only 10 tons and that's a 15 ton flywheel right here it has the timing marks on it now we're going to walk around here to the control panel for this engine as engines get bigger they get a little bit more sophisticated monitoring and controls so this panel has a little bit more, a little more ga gauges, a few more extra gauges. Maybe I got a kilowatt gauge on this. And oh, another Woodward Governor. IC type also, uh, 533 RPM. And the control station for throttle control right here. And starting and air and all that for air start. Once, once fuel, and once for the air. And they got a cover on this one here, cam, very similar cam to the other engine. Or I can't, similar. And it's also set up dual fuel engine, so two fuel injection valves and cylinder lubricators again, very similar to the other one. And you have your, this here big gray part here around curved part is the scavenging air duct uh, manifold, scavenging air manifold, inlet air manifold, same, same thing. And it goes down over here, so they have a nice, uh, they have an electric motor. 
has a 300, I think it was, 350 horsepower motor, high voltage motor. And that's their scavenging air for starting. Uh, uh, hmm, I'll have to check. I think this is a two cycle engine also. Yeah, it runs all the time. And A lube oil filter purification system. A little open wiring. <laughs> now Jeff is a, they only have one guy uh, having to work on and maintain this stuff right uh, for the last few years. So it's, it's a, this is a big job if you want to maintain this equipment uh, for one guy. These are the crankcase doors. Now this engine they've actually had uh, a couple. He said. Over the years, uh, crankcase explosions on this engine. That's yeah, usually from the top of the big Nordberg. This is a 10 cylinder engine. This is a cooling water line. This is the high pressure air uh, line, I believe. Yeah, this is the starting air high pressure line, direct air injection. Uh, this is your fuel injector right here, one fuel injector. Now really large engines have more than one fuel injector or on some uh, heavy fuel engines, uh, small heavy fuel engine will even have more than one fuel injector. Pretty cool thermometer on each cylinder for cooling water temps. There's a bridge crane, very nice bridge crane. Goes all the way across, of course. Kind of funny being here in this power plant. Uh, ladders like this, this is very common to see ladders like this on ships. Very common. Most of your ladders are this style. Very steep. Go up and forward, come down and forward type ladder. Now this engine actually has an electric turning gear set up right here. It's electric motor. It's geared through this handle here to engage into the flywheel. Which has a big gear on it down here, down low. Not all the engines have a turning gear. Uh, the other ones have them, they're manual. Uh, hand ratchet, crank thing. Very lot, a lot of work to uh, be doing that. So poor Jeff down here by himself. Take a little walk downstairs here to lower bay. It's got a cooling water heat exchanger. Right there, pressed air tanks for starting air in the end. Yeah, and look at this. What a nice setup here with the old Walker Turner drill press. I wouldn't doubt if it's the original tool for this power plant. Very nice. A little vice set up there, a little anvil set up there, grinder. Little bench for that's a sheet metal covered pipe vise yeah, a couple of vices and uh, he's got the I got some uh, cooling water pumps this set uh, triple pumps here set up and actually this is a very modern piece of equipment right here this blue thing this is a plate plate heat exchanger now on all modern ships today this is what you'll find uh, for most all your heat exchangers are these plate type heat exchangers very very well they work very well and they take up a small amount of space there's the other side of this plate heat exchanger these are it's only it's about almost a, about a foot across here on this one now there's a bunch of little plates in there stainless steel plates if you need more cooling capacity you can see how long these are you can just open this up and throw in some more plates if you don't have enough cooling capacity. And they got another heat exchanger back here. And such and other equipment. And a few more pumps over here. Now these are a, and more compressed air tanks. A lot of high pressure air. It takes quite the blast to get the engines to turn so you 
that has some uh, air stored up. So this is the control panel for that big Nord Nordberg engine, and you can see he's got you know, air pressure ready to go, starting here. 180 pounds. Jacket water's warmed up. 125, 30 uh, uh, degrees Fahrenheit. Jacket water in, jacket water out, basically the same temperature. So, the lube oil temperature in and out, about the same, of course, because of the jacket water. So, this engine is pretty much ready to go. And it can start it up in a moment. Right here, this control panel for putting the generator online. Uh, put this generator online at least. Uh, maybe, oh, maybe it's all the generators actually. So they have one, two, three, four, five, six all labeled uh, here. And uh, just so you can uh, synchronize them either to the grid or, which is what they would normally do for testing and stuff, or uh, if there's a blackout, pop it online. They pretty much can supply power to the entire town of Sydney. So, now a control board like this is very common. It would be almost identical to ones on ships. Um, when I say identical, I say ident mean identical. From the gauges, these are all GE gauges, GE uh, reverse power relays, etc. Switches, everything, uh, amazingly. Uh, identical to what you might find on a ship. It's too bad I didn't make videos when we were on ships. Uh, I think uh, I think the viewership would have really enjoyed that. There's so much uh, out there that, to see. It's uh, it's uh, really interesting. Going back here to the office area, and that's about it. Like I said, I want to thank uh, thank Jeff and Mike, uh, Mike Palmer and Jeff Thompson for allowing me uh, free reign here at the power plant to shoot video. Uh, it's extremely nice of them. Very very cool. Uh, one day I'll have to stop in here when they see it, see something run.